This is the Cole Rogers FMP student at Albany State University and today I will be performing a stroke assessment. If you are a provider and you have a patient that you suspect is positive for a stroke, then there is a very common test that you can do called a Cincinnati Stroke Test. It's also called a FAST test, F-A-S-T, uh, stands for Face, Arms, Speech, and Time. Uh, to begin with the test, um, we start with the assessment of the facial group. Can you smile for me? Show me your teeth. Very good. And with this, we're checking for facial droop. Um, we want to see if there is um, a difference in either side of the face. One side uh, would show you more of a smile and the other side just a bland look or even uh, a frown. Next, we go on to assess our arms. Can you hold your hands out in front? Flip them over for me. Mm -hmm. Now close your eyes. Now where did I touch you? My fingertips. Which side? Both. Okay, so here we're checking for what we call an arm droop. And with the arm droop, you, um, they will display um, upper motor weakness for one, if they are positive for a stroke. There'll be weakness in one side. You'll see that one side doesn't um, lift and hold as much strength as the other. And also with that, we check for um, neglect. We can identify if the patient neglects one side. Uh, with a stroke patient, if you touch one side at a time, uh, then they're more likely to note the sensation that is there. But if they're positive for a stroke and you touch both sides at the same time, then with a the stroke, then they may possibly neglect one side and tell you that you only touched one side of their body. And next we move on and we um, can also check for um, visual fields as well as neglect. Um, how many fingers do you see? Three. How many on this side? One. How many on this side? Two. So here we're checking for, like I said, visual fields and also neglect. Uh, with a patient that's positive for a stroke, sometimes uh, they will lose vision in the affected side. And as well as uh, explained before, they will, um, when applying both sides of the body, they will neglect one side and they will either say you're holding up uh, fingers on one side or the opposite side, but they won't identify both. And next we move on to our next uh, step in the assessment. Um, look at my nose, okay? And I want you to tell me what hand I'm moving. Both. Okay. Again, here we're looking for um, visual fields and also again the issue of neglect um, when you stand in front of the patient and have them stare straight forward into your nose and you wiggle both hands and you want them if they are positive for a stroke then they would only identify one side of motion instead of both sides okay repeat after me you can't teach an old dog new tricks you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Here we're checking for abnormalities in the speech. Um, often with patients that are positive for a stroke, then uh, they will have slurred speech due to the loss of motor skill on one side of the body. Okay, next thing I want you to do is put your pinky finger on the tip of your nose. Okay, very good. With this, we're testing for understanding of language and comprehension. And you want to be very careful not to demonstrate this motion for the patient when you're asking them to do it. Uh, because if you demonstrate, then they will um, often just repeat what they have seen. You want to make sure that they're comprehending a step-by-step -step instruction. Take your pinky finger, put it on your nose. If they can comprehend those steps and actually follow through and do it without seeing you, do that for them. And a patient who is unable to comprehend those steps and actually push through and do it, that um, is a sign that they may be positive for a stroke as well. All right, next thing I need you to do is stand for me. Okay, I'm going to this. And I just want you to just back up and kind of just walk around from side to side for me. Mm -hmm. And walk forward. And here what we're doing, if you want the patient to walk around, you're wanting to test for overall neurological function with the patient. You look at their gait, you look at their stability, and the fact that they're steady and able to ambulate and walk on their own. And that 
uh, basically shows you that they're neurologically intact um, if they're able to stand, have a steady gait, and ambulate without stumbling or um, being unsteady on their feet. This concludes our assessment. Thank you.